Welcome to UC Today with me, David Dungay. I have with me today Zias Caravalla, Principal Analyst of ZK Research. Welcome to the show, Zias. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great, Dave. How are you, man? I'm fantastic. And we have some well, equally fantastic news to discuss today. Uh, the acquisition of Vonage by Ericsson, uh, $6.2 billion. Um, huge news for our market. So I want to dig into this subject a little bit uh, with you, Zias. Um, first of all, you know, what did you make of the deal? Uh, was it a surprise for you? Um, it wasn't a surprise that Vonage got acquired. I think this is a company that's been um, you know, trading water from the stock price for a while. It's seen a little bit of upward movement, uh, done a lot to revamp the back end, but I have heard that the company had been um, looking for a buyer off and on over the years. And so um, that wasn't a surprise. In fact, I always felt that if you looked at all the UCAS vendors, Vonage is, you know, where their current valuation was, which I think was about $4 billion at, at the time, um, was pretty cheap compared to, you know, what Ring Central and Zoom and companies like that trade had. So I always felt from an investment perspective, if you liked the secular trend of communication with the cloud, you should love Vonage because, you know, from a, because I thought it was undervalued. And so I wasn't surprised they could acquire it. Ericsson Bynum did surprise me, though, because I thought you might see a telco by Vonage, you might see another UCAS vendor, maybe Ring wants to, you know, increase their install base or, you know, uh, you know something like that. I, I really, I really didn't foresee Ericsson in there just because Ericsson is, you know, we think it's a telco equipment company and, and while they're kind of related, it's a little bit of a, you know, round peg oval hole. So you can kind of make it fit. Uh, but it's a you know it's a pretty tight squeeze. Yeah. <laughs> well, let, let's talk about the yeah. bits uh, the bits that do fit. Uh, you know, Ericsson very much has uh, has put their focus um, around this acquisition on the the API, the integration piece, uh, and around five G. Can you tell us a little bit about you know what what does that mean from a sort of a five G perspective, and uh, what's the significance of all of this? Yeah, once at, at first, and honestly, at first, Dave, that it didn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, and uh, but then I, I dove into it and I thought about it and I looked at what Ericsson had been doing in the past. And so if I think the first thing to understand uh, that's important is 5G is fundamentally different than 4G, right? It's a cloud native backend, uh, which means it's microservices based, container based, and enables you know um, uh, rapid application deployment. And so all the different ways that a cloud provider operates, that's how a 5G operates. Yeah, it can work. Now, um, last year, I think it was last year, uh, Ericsson bought a company called Cradlepoint, who is uh, provides you know five G offload and things, cellular offload and things like that. But they have a pretty sophisticated set of IoT APIs, and so those things they can build into their five G stack and allow five G operators to provide faster, better connectivity to IoT devices. In fact, Twilio has done the same thing, right? And so. If you extend that analogy from IoT to UC, now they need a set of UC APIs. And what is Vonage's biggest area of strength? It's the it's the old it's the CPaaS business that they bought from Nexmo. And in fact, um, a couple of years ago now, I had written about a trend that I thought called UC IoT, in which we would see devices and machines talk to people more. So if you think of what UC is, it's ostensibly people talking to people, IoT is machines talking to machines. Well, I think in the pretty near future, we already have this in a lot, in a large, to a large degree, people and machines are going to communicate with each other. And so we need to bring the worlds of UC and IoT together. And so now the combination of the Cradle Point APIs and the Nexmo APIs actually creates a very nice backend API platform for Ericsson to build into their 5G stack, allowing their telco customers to actually build some pretty interesting, innovative applications. And that's why I think they bought it. It wasn't really for the UCAS, CCAS businesses, which which is what you know a lot of people see, but it was really for that back end CPAS business, which, you know, arguably, you know, Vonage is the number two vendor behind Twilio totally. here. So I mean, I do want to talk about the the UCAS and, and CCAS business, but before we do, I mean let's just stay with with this um, API question for now. I mean, if you're a Twilio right now, you know, how how are you feeling about a you know major major player uh, in this this acquisition? Yeah, short term, I think I'd be happy about it just because I do think Nexo has been nipping at the heels and this might create a bit of disruption. Uh, I do know that Twilio has been trying to push into telco more, and this would certainly create a more formidable competitor for them there. 
I don't. I think it might um, a- actually uh, help Twilio in enterprise, though, because Ericsson's really not known as that big an enterprise vendor outside of a handful of verticals, and so it might allow Twilio to really extend their lead in enterprise, but will create a more formidable competitor on the telco side. And um, you know, so the telco opportunity, I think, five G is going to be, you know, huge. Um, and but uh, I, I do think that it, it may um, cause a bit of disruption on the enterprise side. So from a Twilio perspective, I think it's probably a net positive. Although I do think it it creates more competitiveness with telcos. So let, let's talk about the uh, the UCAS and the CCAS side of Vonage then. Um, obviously, big in the inter- enterprise. That's that's where uh, you know they, they make their money. Um, tell me, what, what does this mean for them? You know, what does this mean for this part of the business? Yeah, I I think it, it would, well, I, and I don't know what their plans are because uh, I haven't talked to anybody at Ericsson or Vonage about this. But I suspect Ericsson will leave them alone and let them run as Vonage business. In fact, that's what they should do. Vonage's brand is still pretty well known. Um, it's a little bit mixed with the consumer business, the former consumer business. You know, everybody knows the, uh, you know, the old uh, yeah, Chan there, woo, 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 you know that one. Um, but I, uh, I, I do think it is a fairly well recognized brand where Ericsson's is not an enterprise. So if they were to try and turn it into Ericsson, UCAS, CCAS, I think that would that would really set what Vonage had, has a, has accomplished of these past computers back. And so if they are going to keep the UCAS, CCAS business, um, then they should leave it alone and let it run standalone. Uh, the other option is they could sell it off. Them. And if they really wanted the CPAS piece, take the CPAS piece, spit out the UCAS, CCAS business. There's plenty of buyers out there, uh, I, I think, today. In fact, there's a lot of supply out there. Um, I would actually like to see, the thing I would like to see is have Ericsson actually be a little more aggressive and do a bit of a roll-up. Go buy Fuse, go buy 8 by something like that, and create a much bigger competitor. Because right now in the UCAS, CCAS space, we got a couple of really big companies and a whole bunch of small ones. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, tell us, um, like, what, what's the, what's the long term play here? You know, how do you see this this playing out over the next couple of years? Well, long term, it actually uh, I think follows a lot of the trends that we've been talking about. This whole concept of composable applications, where UC becomes less of a product. And more of a platform where you know mobile operators, enterprises, whoever can take UC components, you know, like like video, for instance, which is what Nextmo does really well, and embed it into other applications. And so, if that indeed is the trend where we're switching, where um, uh, U, UCAS and CCAS is switching away from your pre-built CAM product that we use into more um, uh, of composable building blocks, then actually this is this aligns Ericsson really well with the future. You know, for that telco audience, I think if they really want to take this enterprise, there's a lot of work for them to do. But I, but I do think it is it it is pointed in the direction of the industry is moving. Well, Zias, um, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for sharing your insight on the deal today. All right, thanks, thanks, Dave, and uh, appreciate having me on. And thank you for watching. You've been watching me, David Dugate, on UC Today. If you like today's conversation, please give us a like and share on social media. That's it for me. I'll see you next time.